let's talk about work. Not effort, but work. Work is something that has been accomplished. Same in life, and it's the same in physics. So in physics, we define work as the dot product of the force vector and the distance vector. If you don't know what a dot product is, don't worry. It's very simple. It's simply telling you that the work is equal to the component of force times the component of distance in the same direction. So, for example, if I pull this table straight up, I'm clearly applying a force. However, my force is upward, and I'm trying to move the table this way. So, while I have the value for the force, I don't have any dot product value. The work is zero because it has not been moved. Now, another example is what if I pull at an angle? So let's say I pull at 100 newtons and the angle of my arm in the table is 30 degrees. So this angle right here is 30 degrees. Well, if I pull 100 newtons at 30 degrees and start pulling the table, how much work has been done? Let's say I move the table half a meter. Well, I'll tell you what it's not. The work is not equal to 100 newtons times half a meter. That's not the situation. Because my force vector of 100 newtons is pointing like this. And it's at a 30 degree angle. So my x component of force is a hundred newtons times cosine 30 degrees, and that's equal to 86. I believe 86.6, so let's just call it 87. 87 newtons. And I went half a meter, so my work is equal to the x component of force times the displacement, so that's 87 newtons times 0 0.5 meters. So that's one half of 87, or 43.5. And that's joules. A newton meter is equal to a joule. So that's how much work was done in this situation. Well, what that means is I transferred 43.5 joules of energy to the table. Excellent. So that's your general definition of work and how it works. Let's go on to an example problem with friction. So here I have a girl on a slide, and she's, say the slide is 8 meters high. This downhill sliding portion has no friction. Maybe she has a cardboard box under her. And reduces the friction to almost zero, but then she loses the box at the bottom, and there is friction on the bottom part of the slot. And the coefficient of friction down here is 0.5. Now, we can calculate, we can calculate how far she's gone. So we want to know how far did she slide at the bottom until she came to a stop. And actually, I know it's going to be further than this. Let's draw the arrow. How would we do that calculation? Well, we start with energy conservation. We know that the initial energy equals the final energy. Always, always true that energy is conserved. Now, energy can be moved from one system to another, and that's what, that's what work does. Work is the transfer of energy. Well, what's the initial energy? Well, she's sitting up here at the top. She's not moving. There's no springs. The only energy she has is potential energy of gravity. And then at the bottom, well, she comes to a stop. So, and she's at the bottom. No potential energy, no kinetic energy. She has transferred her energy out via the work of friction to the environment. She heated up the slide, probably heated up the air a little bit, made some noise. So, good, let's now work on calculating how far she went. Well, potential energy is mgh, and that's equal to the work done by friction. We know that the work done by friction is the force of friction 
dotted into the displacement. So let's draw the three body diagram at the bottom. Let's say while she's sliding at the bottom, here she is. We know that there's the force of friction going this way. And so, excellent. Force of friction. We also know she's uh, mg, and then there's a normal force. So, it's the friction force that stops her. And when I take this dot product, I simply get, I simply get a negative value. There's no angles. And we know that the force of friction is mu times the normal force and then times the distance that she travels. I'm leaving off the negative sign. That just simply tells us that the energy is being transferred out. So MGH equals mu times the normal force times the distance. And I know that the normal force has to equal mg because she's not accelerating up or down. So these two forces have to balance. So now I have mgh equals mu mg times the distance traveled. And I can then divide both sides by mg. Cancel, 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 cancel. And finally, coming down here, I have h, that is the height of the slide, equals mu times her distance traveled. I can plug in the values, and we'll get our answer. The slide's 8 meters high. The coefficient of friction is 0.5. Delta x. Divide both sides by 0.5. And 8 divided by 0.5 is 16. We now know that she went a distance of 16 meters before coming to rest.